Hi guys, welcome back to the Art of Server. So this is just a quick video. Once again, I run into a card that I think is counterfeit and I just wanted to share that with you guys. So this is the card I recently received from one of my vendors. And this was not a Chinese vendor, by the way. Um, they are basically a, a server PC recycler and they parted out some parts from some servers and ended up with this card and sold it to me. Um, I've notified them and let them know that I believe this is counterfeit. You know, they've been good about it, so I don't have any problems with that particular vendor. But take a close look at this. I'm showing this to the camera so you guys can take a close look. Let's take a look at the back. So there's a couple of things that I wanted to point out that I noticed about this card. So in some of my previous videos where I've talked about counterfeit cards, you guys, uh, if you haven't seen those, I'll put a card up in the corner for you to go check out, but uh, I recommend you check them out if you're concerned about buying counterfeit stuff on eBay and other places. But basically uh, there are a lot of counterfeit LSI cards on the market. And there are a couple of signs that I look for to identify stuff that is counterfeit. And so that does not end up in my inventory. And so if you're buying from my store, make sure, uh, you know, rest assured that I put in every effort that I can to ensure that you guys don't end up with counterfeit stuff coming from my store. But uh, of course, you know, if you, if there's a really good counterfeiter out there that fools me, then, you know, unfortunately there's nothing I can do about that. But um, I do put in every effort to try to uh, avoid the counterfeiters. So this is not necessarily a sophisticated uh, counterfeit uh, because if you're looking at this right now, I think if you've seen my previous video, you, you can probably immediately tell that there's something a little suspicious about this. And that is that the LSI logo and copyright mark are not on the PCB at all. So normally right here would be a uh, LSI logo. And then somewhere on the board, there would also be a uh, LSI logic copyright uh, mark, but we don't see that here at all. And it's not on the back either. So that's immediately uh, suspect. And just as I had uh, shown you guys in a previous video where I think I had, what was that, a 9228i, I think, that uh, was suspected counterfeit. That was the one that did have the logo, but there were so many other signs of um, suspicious things about that other card uh, that made me suspect it was counterfeit. And one of the things that I had pointed out in that video was that the heatsink design was different. It was thinner and had like a different number of fins. So this has the same issue. So let me show you now that you've, hopefully you guys have taken a close look at that. Here is a card that is believed to be genuine. And as you can see, has the LSI logo. And over here has the, uh, let me bring it close to the camera so you can see there, a uh, LSI Corporation All Rights Reserved copyright mark. Okay. And the heat sink design is different. Now, the number of fins uh, might be different, but also the thickness. Let me see if I can pull this up. And this is the same thing I noticed in the last card, counterfeit card that I'd run into. I don't know if you can distinguish that. I'm trying to line this up for you in the camera so you can see, but the heatsink on this side is thinner than this one. So that's something that's a little bit suspicious as well. Now, if you look at the circuit board design, there are actually some significant differences other than so, so it's not uncommon to see, even amongst uh, a collection of genuine uh, cards, to see different, slightly different components being used, as long as they're kind of the same spec. So, you know, there's some capacitors here that are black, and you have the corresponding ones here that are um, yellow. But uh, something that's very different is the circuit design in this area. This is the genuine card versus this area that you can tell is much more complicated 
with a lot more components and I don't know why that is. So hopefully you guys can see that difference. This area right here on the genuine card versus this area on the suspected counterfeit card. So the circuit design is significantly different in that area. All right, so other than that, I don't know if you guys have already noticed it yet or not. But let me just also just kind of let you see the, the backside. So this is the, the counterfeit is on over here. This is the genuine card. And for the most part, the backside looks the same. Now some of the stickers, the labels uh, look different. So have a, let's see if I can show you guys this. All right. So this is the counterfeit, suspected counterfeit card. And this is the genuine card. And you can see that the serial number sticker has a different type of um, font. And yeah, this is what I'm uh, this this is what I'm used used to seeing amongst my inventory. And this just looks a little different. So there's that. And also the same thing goes for, let me put it this way so you guys can see, um, the SAS address label is different. Okay. All right. So let me let you guys look at these, the front side again. There is something that I noticed this time about these between these two cards that I didn't notice before. And I just want to see if you might be able to notice it. All right. So the difference that I noticed is that, okay, this is the genuine card. If you look at this closely, okay. Like all the pins here, look like they are maybe brass and then the uh, the traces that are exposed so you know these touch points right here where you can test the voltage and stuff like that on the card they're copper right and yeah over here too or it looks well at least the color suggests it's copper right and so the grounding um uh, areas here where the screws are also copper. And I know it's a little bit hard to tell probably in the camera here, but you know, there's like this green, um, protective layer over some of the traces and you can see that they're kind of dark Brown under that green. So that probably means that they are kind of copper like color, um, with that tint of green on top. So it turns into a dark Brown. So if you now look at the suspected counterfeit card, everything, so these four pins have a silverish color. All the touch points um, have a silver color. And I don't think that's just like tinned uh, traces because if you look at the traces underneath this green as well, they're very bright instead of like a dark brown. So it, it almost seems like it's it's a silver trace with this green coating on it, right? So that seems to be something that I didn't notice before. And I don't know what material they're using for the traces. I mean, the pins here are look like they are gold, but the traces and everything else look like they're some other type of metal, not copper. So I don't know if maybe they're using some other type of conductive um, metal that's maybe cheaper than copper or something like that. But okay, so the last time I showed you guys some counterfeit cards, 
there was a comment. And unfortunately, that card I ended up returning to the, the vendor who sold it to me. Uh, this particular vendor told me I could keep these cards because uh, they didn't want to resell counterfeit cards anyway, so they didn't want them back. And so I got, I got to keep this one uh, for the first time. I actually have a sample of the counterfeit card with me. So uh, there was a question in the last video that when I showed you guys some of the counterfeit stuff I saw, and someone asked to weigh the cards and see if there's a difference. And so I thought that was a great idea, except that I didn't have the card anymore. But now that I do, I figure, okay, let's do that this time. All right, so here is my shipping uh, scale. And uh, I will set it to grams. And so here's the genuine one. I'll put that on and it's reading about 90 grams. Okay, so let's put the suspected counterfeit card and that's reading 99 grams. So it's about 10% heavier. So that's kind of interesting. The heat sink seems to be smaller, so it's not like it's gaining weight from the heat sink difference, uh, per unless perhaps the heat sink is made out of a denser material, but it doesn't feel that way. So something about this card is heavier. It's 10% heavier than the genuine card. And I don't know if maybe that's a result of the different material um, they're using for the traces, the electrical traces on this board. But yeah, it is, well now it's reading 100, so well, let's see, 99, 99 to 100 grams. So anyway, yeah, so there's definitely a weight difference. So that's very interesting. Thanks for that suggestion, whoever it was who said, hey, weigh, weigh them and see what the difference is. So, um, so yeah, definitely. I don't think that, you know, there are a lot more components in this one area that I was pointing out. But I'm not sure that these tiny little components would add up to a 9 gram difference. But yeah, definitely it is 10% heavier than... A genuine card. So anyway, that's kind of interesting. So, um, so yeah, I think the the biggest difference that I've noticed this time. Uh, now, obviously, like I said, this is not a any kind of sophisticated counterfeit. Obviously, you know, in my very first video about counterfeit cards, I told you most obvious sign is when the LSI logo is missing, and so obviously that's missing. Uh, but I didn't notice, you know, the other differences. Like, I think it's really easy to see from this side that, like, the conductive material they're using here, it's, it's the silverish metal. Whereas if you look at the genuine card, it's copper. So, so yeah, that's something new that I've noticed. I don't know if that's a good indicator of whether a card is uh, counterfeit or genuine. You know, I believe, I mean, I've handled thousands of these cards here, um, and I believe they've always been, the genuine ones that I've handled have always been copper. So this is something else. So anyway, um, I tested this card out. It does work. And it seems to be an LSI 2008 chipset, at least according to the readouts. Um, I'm not popping off the heatsink because if you guys don't know, uh, these heatsinks are usually epoxyed on, on this generation of card. So even if you remove these pins, like I'll show you, um, I'll disengage the pins here. Right, so the, the pins are through the hole, as you can see right there, right here. So they're not holding on to the board anymore, but this heatsink doesn't come off, right? So it's epoxyed on, and I've tried to uh, remove these heatsinks that have epoxy on them, and uh, it didn't go well. I ended up, I think, damaging the BGA uh, solder joints underneath the chip, and then, it, you know, it just didn't work right after that. And, uh, like, it would work if I put a clamp on it and hold this down. So, obviously, something got loose. 
But anyway, uh, so I'm not going to take this off to check what chip is under there because I don't want to actually ruin this a card. Um, you know, maybe this is kind of useful to for occasions like this, for videos like this. But I did turn this card on, put it in the server, turn it on. And funny thing is it identified, it had the PCIe um, IDs of a 9208E card. So this is a 9211-8i card, but the PCI ID says 9200-8e, like if it was an external card. Now, of course, you know those IDs are compatible with the firmware that runs on this thing, so it doesn't necessarily cause a functional problem. But obviously, this is not an external card; it's an internal card. So, you know, the counterfeiters probably weren't paying a lot of attention when they were putting this thing together and flashed whatever e prom content uh which is um on this card i think it's that chip right there that's where the sbr e prom is and uh they just used whatever e prom they could get to work with that firmware i think instead of using what is supposed to be there so yep so that was another interesting difference that this came up as a 9208e card uh, but otherwise, the firmware ran, the LSI firmware seems to run fine. The card seems to function as you would expect. So, you know, it's functional, just questionable materials and uh, and slightly thinner heatsink. So anyway, just want to share that with you guys. If you are out there, you know, trying to be cautious about not buying any counterfeit cards, I recommend that you shop from trusted sellers if you're just kind of cautious and you want to know how to identify them uh, like i've said in previous videos look for the lsi logo also look for the vendors that are saying that these cards are oem cards because so if you ask them like hey why isn't there an lsi logo and they say well this is an oem card well i think that's just their way to circumvent it's like their excuse to tell eBay because on eBay, you're not officially allowed to sell counterfeit anyway. That's against policy, but it's their way of saying, oh, look, we're not, we're not violating that policy because we're selling OEM cards that don't have the LSI logo. And um, I think frankly, that's bullshit. So yeah. So anyway, look for the LSI logo, avoid vendors that say it's OEM. And now I guess you can also add, you know, potentially looking for, uh, at the traces and pads here to see if they're made out of a silverish metal or if they're copper, you know, maybe that's another indicator. So, uh, and then if you get the card, I guess, plug it in and see if, uh, the PCI ID actually matches what the card's supposed to be. So if those things don't match up, you know, and you're missing the LSI logo and that kind of stuff, and you're seeing something very similar to this and a, th a thinner heat sink, you probably got yourself a counterfeit card. All right, so anyway, I just wanted to share that with you guys. Hope, you know, that was informative. If you liked this video, you know, make sure to give me that thumbs up. And uh, if you're new to this channel and you wanna avoid other counterfeit cards, uh, go check out my other videos. If you're into building server uh, storage servers, um, you'll probably find a lot of useful videos on my channel. So, you know, consider subscribing and uh, hit that notification bell so you don't miss my videos. Also, if you'd like to support uh, this channel, go check out my eBay store. I have genuine LSI cards uh, and other, a whole bunch of other uh, interesting server gear in my eBay store. So go check out the link in, down in the video description below. All right, thank you very much, guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye.